Hey everyone, it's Always Improving, and today I'm going to be creating a still life picture. Um, this will just be with graphite, so just with my pencils. And I'm using, um, well first I'm using this reference photo that I'm going to put on the screen now. And for the paper, I just uh, trimmed up a piece of this Strathmore uh, color pencil paper. Um, but I trimmed it down, I think, to 10.5 by 14, whereas this is 11, and a half, or 11 by 14. Um, and I know it says colored pencil, but it's the best paper I have to work with um, graphite. So this is what I'm going to use uh, for this image. And now that I've shown you the reference image, I'm just going to put it back on screen for a second. Um, the colored version uh, this time. I just grayscaled it before uh, to make it easier for me. Uh, but this project is for um, Art 1, actually. So that's what I'm doing this for, but I wanted to share with you guys the process behind it. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to get right into it. It's not going to be anything too, like, I, I think this won't be too difficult, but we're, we'll see. I've never really done a still life before, and I don't work um, with just pencil very often. Usually I have color. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how this goes. And I'm just going to begin by sketching out uh, a little bit of guide to kind of uh, get started with this image and then we'll see how it goes from there. So before I get into what I want to talk about this video, uh, first I'm just going to talk about my picture just a little bit. Uh, after I did the guidelines for this image and sort of just a grid um, to place the objects, I did just that. I went out and placed just the shapes of each of the five different things in my image. I had some sort of vase, an apple, a glass like jar thing, um, another vase, like a teapot vase, and then a seashell. Um, all these objects, they, none of them were too uh, confusing or had any like hard shapes to get down. I would say the most complex out of uh, just the shape was the, um, was the seashell. Um, but overall, that's just what I did first, and then I could move on to basic value things. But what I really want to talk about today is kind of like my art education and people's art education in general. And what I want to talk about today is um, art school or just art education in general. Uh, personally, I have not taken a like real art class, I guess you could say. I took one in middle school, and of course I did in, in elementary school, you know, um, but it wasn't anything focused on me, it was just sort of generalized, um, have fun art classes, you know, stuff like that. Um, but next year is the first time I'm going to take like kind of a real art class, like I would say, so I'm going to take art two in high school, and that's going to be the farthest I go with my art classes, I think. I'm definitely not going to art school or anything. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about this, uh, because I feel like, like, even though I have worked really hard in art and, like, I practiced a lot, because I haven't had, like, an art class, it's just, like, different. I feel like a lot of people do or feel like they need to go to school, but, like, my whole channel is about art, and I have never really focused on getting an education in art, which is really interesting um, for me like just thinking about because I feel like that's how you're supposed to like start things you're supposed to learn by hearing about it and learn by um, l learn by a mentor or by some sort of guide but I really haven't with art and that was just really interesting that thing that occurred to me the other day because this piece is like I feel like a staple for a lot of art classes like a still life piece like uh, studying value this is a really important skill but for me I've never really done a still life before and so this was quite an interesting experience um, and it wasn't too hard luckily uh, and it, it, I thought that was interesting that I didn't really struggle a lot with this um, even though I'm I haven't like studied value very much I know what value is and I know my darks and light and I can look at an image and be able to take the things that I need from that image and reproduce it in my art. Um, which I thought would be more of a skill you learned in art class. Um, but even without that education, I was still able to complete this piece. Um, and speaking of this, we should get back to the um, piece of art just for a minute. So right now I am 
have worked on the teapot and the glass um, jar and some of the background now as well, uh, as along with the apple. So really what I'm doing is getting down basic values. I wasn't really sure how dark I needed everything, so I was just sort of guesstimating and adding what values I thought were right. Um, looking at it, I know that that, that uh, teapot thing was going to be like the darkest thing in the image. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that was pretty pronounced. Um, and that, that apple at the top, that kind of blended in with the background and the grayscale. So um, I wanted to make sure those two things kind of stood out um, in that glass. That was really fun to draw, actually. Uh, I really enjoyed making that reflection um, of the teapot in the, in the glass jar. That was pretty cool. Uh, I thought it was interesting that sometimes the glass would be darker than its surroundings. I thought that was really interesting too. Uh, but yeah, overall I was just adding some basic values to keep this, um, or to start the still life process. And if we go back to the art school topic for just another minute, um, it's not that I don't think an art education is valuable at all, because it really is, especially if that is going to be your job. like. I think that there's a lot of value in doing that and learning from the professionals and other people. Um, but for me, it's not going to be a priority. And that's just because, like, I don't think I'm going to ever get a job in art education or in making art. Um, if anything, it'll just remain a hobby and sort of my side, like, not even a job. Like, I make, I make continue to create YouTube videos and continue to release content, but it will not be my primary source of income when I'm older, um, I think. <laughs> um, and so for me, in our education just isn't, isn't really worth it, and uh, I am really excited to take, like, art classes if I ever can, if they're available, if I, if it, if it aligns right, I would love to take art classes, like, that, that seems fun. Um, but I feel like with the resources available right now, um, like YouTube, all those videos on, about art and creativity, you can learn just about anything you want. Uh, I think there's a lot of useful skills out there already that you can learn from, or books even. Um, so art classes aren't going to be a priority for me, but I think they're a really valuable asset um, when you look for them and try to get a mentor, uh, especially the mentor part, because I feel like just having someone who is knowledgeable about some of the um, characteristics of art and can really judge how you're doing, I think that's really valuable if you are trying to create a portfolio or trying to get in some sort of industry. I think that is a really valuable asset. Um, and I think that would be the primary reason I ever signed up for like a traditional art education. Um, but other than that, uh, that's really all I had to talk about for the art education and traditional schooling for art. Um, but about this still life, so you can see I'm pretty much uh, pretty much done. I just have a couple more details to work out. Um, I did, let's see here. Oh, I did that like taller base thing. That was pretty interesting to do because I wanted to get those like details in there with like, I don't even know, the metal that was raised, like it had like designs on it. And so that was pretty interesting. Um, and also the seashell. Uh, it was it was like striped and that was kind of difficult to get a good texture on um, but yeah the overall it was really fun to work out all those details and just sort of like experiment with how like how detailed I need things to be to look real and how much would be overkill and it wouldn't look like the image anymore it was really interesting to play with that the final thing I did for this image was really look at the whole image and focus in on the darkest areas and the lighter areas and really like make that contrast higher. So I went in and added a lot more shadows to the background, to specific objects, to the shadows of objects, and I even like erased some parts where I needed it to be lighter or I made the space around the highlight darker so that the highlight would stand out more, things like that. I went in and really uh, upped the contrast and just finalized a lot of the values of this piece.
And with those last values put in place for the still life image, I think this piece has come to an end. I'm not actually going to sign this just because I want it to be as realistic as possible for my portfolio. Um, and I know it's not, it wouldn't be seen as something unrealistic, but I'm not going to sign it for this piece. Um, but thanks so much for watching this and listening to me speak about this, uh, this topic. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.